we are finally here. It is a Modern Warfare 3 day. I just wanted to go over everything new in this game and the best classes and setups so far for people who haven't decided whether they're going to get this game or what is even new about it. And they weren't lying when they said everything from Modern Warfare 2 was going to be transferred into this game. They even transferred over skins they took out of the game into this game. Every finisher, every variant, every skin is in this game. And everything obviously has that Modern Warfare 3 can of paint over it. Now, they do actually have new operators as well. And I noticed you can actually get some of these operators by just leveling up. Now, for the game modes, unfortunately, hopefully this changes on the day one update. There is no gunfight in this game. The only party game they have right now is gun game. Hopefully that changes. I know I saw something about a training course being added to the game, which might help people practice their movement and gun skill. This game seems pretty lackluster when it comes to game, and we just have like the normal TDM, Domination, SD, Hardpoint, just the usual. I know Hardcore is going to be supported. I don't know if it's going to be day one, but one of the newest game modes they have is War. War is a game mode we haven't seen in Call of Duty for like a million years. But I just also realized they have like the same openings they did back in 2019. And I think Modern Warfare 2 has them as well. And speaking of 2019, I don't know if you guys can notice it, but this is Kandor Hideout on Modern Warfare 3. But again, this isn't a multiplayer map, this is the war mode. So basically, you just go half and half on one side. Oh my god, wait, the movement? Did that helicopter just go down? The movement still doesn't feel perfect or on par with 2019, but the movement in this game still feels great. Wait, can you build? Oh my god, you can build like... Oh my god, that looks like Legos, oh my god. But basically, you're just supposed to defend or attack an objective because you switch sides. If you've ever played like a tug of war type of game mode before, it's basically that where you have uh, a team defending, a team attacking, and you guys switch sides and see who does it better. Game modes like this usually have such a crazy potential for you to just drop like 100 kills super easily. And oh my god, this gun has no attachments on it, by the way. With this game giving you so much health and this Uzi killing so fast, there's like no way this isn't like the 2019 Uzi. Like, look at that. Like, I have no attachments and my aim is pretty awful. I can't lie. Test out this pistol real quick. Oh. Okay, at least I got a hit marker there, but oh my god. There's no way that doesn't get nerfed. There's just no way that they give that pistol to everyone in the game. Oh my god! Also, you know what I just realized? When you get a kill, it shows like the name in the bottom, uh, the bottom middle of your screen, just like 2019. So if you're like on a nuke streak, you'll actually be able to tell. And when people call in streaks and stuff like that, it all shows, shows in the top right. Oh my god. Wait, this feels so much better. Look at that. Reload cancel. Reload cancel. I mean, dude, that just feels so much better. That feels so much better. This map has three parts to it. So if you were to lose this, they would go up a part of the map again. And right now we're on Kandor Hideout. After this, it would go to Crossfire from COD 4. And then after that, it would go to Countdown from COD 4. So that basically tells me that those maps are going to be in this game in a later season. It is kind of still hard to, you know, recommend you paying $70 on a game like this when it really is kind of just Modern Warfare 2 DLC. But this update is so substantial to making Modern Warfare 2 a better game that for me, who, who's going to play the game regardless? It's a huge deal. Like this is night and day difference in how it feels. And I'm not going to act like the movement is perfect. Like, it is nowhere near the perfection that Modern Warfare 2019 movement was. Modern Warfare 2019 movement felt so fast, so fluid, and so, like, you just felt like you were in control the whole time. And this game doesn't have that type of polish when it comes to the movement. And I assume that's just because they kind of want to nerf it for, uh... Oh my god. I assume they just want to nerf it for, like, casuals, which is fine. But I also just noticed you don't get kill streaks in this game mode either. So I assume they just did that because this game mode is kind of like already a high kill game mode. That is a little bit disappointing. Because I would have just dropped the nuke right now. Ooh, flawless. Here are the maps we have for release. Obviously, we're going to have all of the Modern Warfare 2009 release maps. Unfortunately, they don't have anything else. But I did see that they do have Shipment, Shoot House, and they have Farm 18. And I think another map from Modern Warfare 2, like the last one we just played coming to this game. But I'm not able to access it right now. And they're the exact same. Like, they are literally the Modern Warfare 2 maps. Which, again, pushes me to believe that this is just a DLC. I actually think I like this lighting out of every single terminal map we've ever had. It is, like, a little bit blue. But this looks so, so good. But now we have to test out what we can actually do. Can we do the age-old trick? Wait. Stop shooting at me. Wait, wait. No way. Wait, what? Are you serious? No way. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Please? No way. No way they just killed every trickshotter's dream on this game. There's no way to get on top of the plane. Why would they not allow you to get on top of the plane? It's one of the most recognizable terminal things ever. Everyone who's ever played terminal or even knows about terminal has seen someone on top of the plane. Can you get in the infected spot? Oh, I just realized this game doesn't even have infected either. Infected? Oh, wait. They actually might have nerfed it. Oh, wait. You can still get on top of this. Why would they let you get on top of this and not on top of the plane? 
That is such like a weird, weird choice to make. Oh, stop shooting at me. But I mean, look at this. This is the TAC 56 for Modern Warfare 2. Look how insanely fast this kills in this game. I mean, dude, there's no way that people just don't pick this up as soon as they hit level 4. I feel like so many people are just not going to want to deal with the multiplayer grind. They're just going to immediately go to guns they already have leveled up and maxed out. But I mean, dude, this looks gorgeous. I can't lie. Oh, I also got a carpet bomb, which is basically just the Modern Warfare 3 stealth bomber. Oh my god. I'm sure a lot of you have been screaming right now asking, can you hit a b-hop? Can you hit a b-hop? And unfortunately, you can't hit like a normal b-hop. Even though I have noticed that like the movement penalties are nowhere near as bad as Modern Warfare 2. If you try to jump in Modern Warfare 2 more than once, your movement penalty is crazy. But in this game, you can still do like everything you used to be able to do in old Call of Duties and still have decent movement speed and still be able to shoot your gun without it hitting you in the face. Wait, do the metal detectors still go off? I can't wait till everyone spawns in here in Modern Warfare 3 and just goes through this and all you hear is that. There's like a million of them going off. I mean, damn! Wait, the ACR actually might kill faster. I, You know what? I think I, it's so hard to tell how much better or worse Modern Warfare 3 weapons will be compared to Modern Warfare 2, but I just think having the option to use both while also playing on both maps is so great. I feel like we haven't had a full year full of content and things to do in a Call of Duty in so, so long. And this game having so much on release, even though it is a lot of reused content, just having that and having something to do, it's going to feel so fresh and nice. And I hope this year for Call of Duty, the community just gets a bigger and bigger and instead of getting smaller the way it has over the past few years. It's been pretty rough, to be honest. So I'm actually pretty excited. Oh, wait, we're actually 25 off this nuke. I know they're, they're just bots, but... I wonder if the nuke sound is gonna... I wonder if they changed the nuke sound from the beta, because I know in the beta, it sounded just like Modern Warfare 2, which was pretty disappointing. It was basically just the Modern Warfare 2 nuke, uh, and not the Modern Warfare 2009 nuke. I also noticed there's no EMP as a score streak in this game, which is really, really weird, since I'm pretty sure they showed it off in the trailer. Honestly, I just hope they add it as an update the same way they did in Cold War with kill streaks. I think the score streaks we have in this game already are, are pretty lackluster and boring, considering we just used them for like the last year. What was that sound? Whoa. It actually goes off. Does this work? Oh, it actually works. Curious about the gunship. Does it have the same exact animation as Modern Warfare 2? Oh, I think it does. Oh, it has the exact animation as Modern Warfare 2. I'm not sure I'm super happy with that. Whoa, wait, is this faster? I think it's faster. The AC-130 is faster in this game. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad they made it faster, at least. They're at least buffing the streaks and making them more fun to use. No matter what gun you're using, no matter what attachment you're using, it actually feels so much faster. All right, let's see what the jug looks like. Hopefully, it's different. Oh, wait, what? I, I think my hand's supposed to be there. I don't have a left hand. I can see it in the shadow. Where's my hand at? It's supposed to be on top of the rail. Wait, can't you, like, jump on top of people? Watch this. <laughs> Dude, they made it where you can't get out of the map or even, like, behind these. Damn. Wait, what if I go here? No. Wait, right here? Surely. No. Let's call him the nuke. Let's see if it's any different. Oh. No, it's still the same sound. Damn. Damn, man. They made it the same sound. Why would they make it the same sound? You think they're going to try to, like, make it its own bundle? Oh. That was weird, it killed me like twice. The same end screen and everything, wow. The weapons, they don't have like a lot of new weapons, especially from the beta. It seems like almost everything we had from the beta was basically what we're gonna have in the full game. There's like one or two SMGs we didn't have. We have like a striker with a nine millimeter magazine and the Uzi, which I got a chance to use and is absolutely insane. It reminded me so much of the 2019 Uzi, but other than that, they didn't really have anything too interesting or new. The only AR that I was able to find that was new was a Holger a DG-58 and the FAMAS, and it's the burst FAMAS like we had back in the original Modern Warfare 2, which is pretty cool. But other than that, mainly the weapons that might be new to you is Modern Warfare 2. If you didn't play it that much, but all of your skins, all of your attachments, literally everything in this game transfers over. And on top of that, I believe they also added Modern Warfare 3 attachments to Modern Warfare 2 weapons. I can't tell, to be honest. There's so many attachments in Call of Duty anymore. 
I can't tell what's Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2, but I'm pretty sure these are Modern Warfare 3 because you can see in the top left under weapon level, it says Modern Warfare 3 under it, and then these say Modern Warfare 2. And for camos, they have everything they had in Modern Warfare 2 for Modern Warfare 2 weapons. It looks like you can't apply the Modern Warfare 3 mastery camo on Modern Warfare 2 weapons from multiplayer, but they actually did add one for zombies, and this one looks absolutely insane. This is like a spider web camo. It's unfortunate the only way you can get it is if you grind out zombies, which isn't free to everyone. And now there's a insane amount of camos. You can see on all unlocked camos is up to 886 camos. There is rows on rows on rows of camos. And everything you got in Modern Warfare 2, even like event camos do transfer over as well, which kind of does push me to believe this game was literally just DLC for Modern Warfare 3. And one of the biggest reasons for that is the kill streaks. I remember in the beta, I tweeted out, hey, there's not like a lot of interesting or satisfying kill streaks in this game. I hope you get some like Black Ops 3 era Black Ops type of streaks where they're like super good, super satisfying and fun. But basically all the streaks in this game are Modern Warfare 2 with like three objections, which is like the Juggernaut Recon, the Carpet Bomb, which is just the, which is just like the stealth bomber from the OG MW3 and the Guardian and the little Mosquito drone as well as the same turn. So other than that, like it's basically Modern Warfare 2 from what I can tell. I was able to notice that like the time to kill was the exact same as Modern Warfare 2. Like you can just see how fast you kill. I'm hoping that it's a bug with Modern Warfare 3 and that these these values don't go in game because when I was playing in game, it did, did kind of feel inconsistent. And oh my God, look at the camo. But as you can see, even with a Modern Warfare 2 Deagle, you can still do Modern Warfare 2 damage on Modern Warfare 3, which I have no idea how they're going to balance. This is what the master camos look like for Modern Warfare 3 guns on multiplayer. Look how crazy this looks. Compared to how Polyatomic and Orion looked at release, these move so much faster and are probably going to look so appealing in game. I kind of honestly don't really like the zombie camos. I think the Modern Warfare 2 zombie camos are so much better. They even updated like Modern Warfare 2 solid camos. Like they have new camos for literally everything. And you can still equip your Modern Warfare 2 camos on Modern Warfare 3 weapons, which is honestly a really, really great addition. Um, and you can even do like charms and uh, gun screens and stuff like that, which I, I genuinely appreciate because, you know, if you spent like a lot of money last year, you don't want to spend any more on a game that won't support it in like a year or two. So I'm glad that everything transfers over. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, they actually have, they have two new knives now. And I noticed that both of these knives, no matter which one you choose, are just straight up better than the Modern Warfare 2 knife. I thought that was like such a weird thing to do because regardless of whether you use this knife, it still has better damage and it has better movement speed than the other knife. And the Karambit actually has less range. You're not going to be able to like lunge at people. It's so small. But I think, I think it's perfectly average. I think it's even more than average if I really think about it. But it is pretty short, so the inspect doesn't look that crazy. And in your hand, you can't really notice it. I really hope they come out with free skins that change the look of this Karambit to make it a little bit more noticeable at least for cosmetics. They were going to keep tuning in the game, but they took tuning out completely because a lot of people didn't like the tuning in Modern Warfare 2, completely removed it from both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 guns this time around. I wasn't a huge fan of tuning, but what I did really like was being able to tune your scope and you can no longer tune your scope in this game. Well, I think every single gun that was good in Modern Warfare 2 is gonna be insane on this game, no matter what, because you're just gonna be so ahead of everyone else when it comes to attachments and weapons that I definitely think it's worth using them, for sure. Unfortunately, it is worth using them. So if you wanna have the best setup, it's definitely that, and you can find all of my settings and setups on my website, and they'll be updated as soon as possible for every game, including Modern Warfare 3s, but I'll just go over and tell you what I think is gonna be the absolute best in this game day one, and again, they'll always be updated on my website at fetus.com. I think personally, I'll be using the quick grip gloves just because it lets you switch weapons faster. If you're using a sniper, I'd probably use marksman, but again, even if I was using a sniper, I'd still want to switch to my pistol faster. So this year, I'll probably be using quick grip. For my boots, it's either going to be lightweight or covert sneakers. I think lightweight boots are going to make such a big difference when it comes to hitting rush routes and search and destroy, because this year they've also given you dead silence as a field upgrade this year. So if you're that confident, you don't have to use covert sneakers every time. And for the gear, it'll probably have to be EOD, tack mask, bone conduction for the most part. I honestly don't even think I'll use bone conduction. I'll probably use EOD or tack mask depending on the team you're playing and what's kind of annoying you the most. Everything else is kind of preference, but those are going to be what I'm going to use just because every year it's kind of been the same. You just want to be able to move faster, do everything faster, and be silent while doing it, especially in a game mode like S&D, where sound and beating people the rush route is extremely important. And for weapons right now, is the ACR, the Striker, Striker 9, Rival got a really big buff as well, I noticed, and the WSP 9. I'll have to do more testing, of course, but they're pretty crazy so far. 
And as for the snipers in this game, I don't think any of the Modern Warfare 2 ones got that much faster. I think they're about the same. And again, they don't have that tuning aspect the last game had. So that's also going to have to come into uh, consideration. And the only real sniper they added was this... Um, this extremely big sniper that is super, super slow. I mean, look at that. And for streaks, that's obviously preference. But if you're playing uh, Search and Destroy, I'd probably just go UAV, Cruise Missile, and Overwatch. Because a lot of the streaks that you have to use inside of like a, a tablet do get you killed most of the time. So I'd probably go for that. And for these settings, these settings seem to be almost exactly the same as Modern Warfare 2. So with a couple of differences. But of course, I'm on a controller. Aim Assist is still good. Even though it did get nerfed, it is still as good as ever. I play Default trigger effects off and you want your dead zones as low as you can possibly do without getting a bunch of stick drift i have my left stick max pretty uh pretty low just so you can move as much as possible when you're adsing because i think that gives you a little bit more aim assist for trigger dead zones you also want these as low as possible but i have like mouse triggers so that doesn't really matter for me on console i played 8-8 but i'll probably go to 9-9 or 10-10 when the game comes out for the aim response curve type i use dynamic and again sensitivity is completely preferent what i would do is go shoot bots and see what feels the best for you but this is my current ads multiplier and then for the aim assist uh, I was trying out Black Ops, but I'd either go for Black Ops or Default if you're using a regular gun, and for sniping, I would use Precision. But if you're going to go back to a regular gun, just use Default or Black Ops. I don't snipe enough to use Precision, but if you're mainly a sniper, that's definitely the best option. And I'm not using my controller as a Wii Remote, uh, so we don't have motion sensor on. I like to play with Automatic Tech Sprint, of course. Um, grounded Mantle off, and we want Partial for the Airborne. Automatic Ground Mantle and Hang, we want that off. For sliding this year, I actually have it on tap to slide instead of tap to dive because sliding is going to be a lot more important. I wouldn't do slide only because diving is still going to have its uh, its own situations and uh, it makes no difference if you have it on slide only. Like you don't slide faster or far or slide cancel different. I like to have my plunge underwater on free. I don't like to pull my parachute unless I want to. Uh, ledge climb, I have it on movement based. Now I have slide cancel sprint on. I haven't been able to test this one too much. I might go to off and test that out some more, but right now I have it on on. And then everything else, I basically have default except for this. I have this on instant. Uh, interact reload behavior on prioritize interact. That's especially important for Warzone players. Armor plate behavior apply all. And then everything else I believe is default. And now for the graphics. Right now I'm on PlayStation. So if you're on PlayStation, make sure to turn off texture streaming. It might make your game look a little bit worse, but you're trying to get the most performance as possible. Uh, motion blur off, depth of field off, fidelity cast, you want it on and on 100 so your game looks extra sharp, which makes, uh, which makes seeing people a little bit easier. It just makes your game look a little bit better overall. For eco mode preset, you want that off. 120 hertz if you can do that please put on 120 hertz if you bought a ps5 or a new xbox that's basically the whole point you want the game to run as good as possible your camera not to be shaken around as much you want to have it on least inverted flashbangs to save your corneas for audio i use headphones it feels the best for me and for master volume if you like music you can have it on but it does go in the middle of an s d round so you want that off you want dialogue volume that's like uh you know people are saying the bomb is planted or characters so i like to have it on 30 Effects on 100 because that's footsteps and gunfire. Voice chat is preference. Cinematic mu uh, music volume doesn't really matter. That's just for like cutscenes when a new season comes out. I like to have voice chat on, of course. Um, and then everything else, again, is preference once again. Except for reduced tinnitus. You want reduced tinnitus sound on because when you get flashbang or like when an explosion goes off, it'll make that little sound and you don't want that to, to go over footsteps or anything like that that's important to you. And for interface, you want your mini map shape on square. I don't like to play with crosshairs on. I like to have them off. If you like to have them on, put them on static and then under crosshairs as well. When you turn it off, I still like to have that center dot on so I can know where I should center and where people are on my screen. Hit marker visuals, you want to know what you're shooting at. Um, and then for player names, you want a full name. Server latency and pack loss is up to you if you want to know that information. This game is almost the exact same as Modern Warfare 2. It's just with a little bit of that Modern Warfare 3 pizzazz on it. But if you have any questions, make sure to go to my Twitch. I'll be streaming as soon as you see this video. I'll be playing this game in real time. You can see how the game plays. You can ask me any questions. I'll try to answer everything I can and you get a better idea of how the game will play in real time. But again, all my settings, all my classes, everything like that, anything you need to know will be on my website, feudives.com, and will be updated as soon as I can. But again, let me know what you guys think about the game. Are you going to pick it up? Are you interested? Let me know in the comment section below. And hopefully this is a good year because personally, I'm pretty interested in how multiplayer is going to play out this year. I think Warzone is going to be insane this year. The map looks good. And with the gameplay mechanics, I think that we're going to be in for a great year. But on top of the gameplay mechanics we have now with Rebirth, Verdansk, and Fortunes keep coming back, I think this year is going to be amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think. My settings are going to be on my website every single day. Everything I use will be there. Thank you guys for the support. I'll see you guys in the next one and in my stream. See ya.